Well, shalom everyone. This is August Rosado with Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries. We want to thank you so much for tuning in on this Friday afternoon as we are coming to you live from our main headquarters here in Lincoln, Rhode Island. I hope and pray that all of you are doing well and that you are keeping yourselves safe and healthy. And uh, again, if you uh, need to go out anywhere, please, it's imperative that you practice safe distancing. And as I said this uh, on our program uh, yesterday, uh, please keep a safe distance of at least six feet away from other people to protect yourselves and your family. And again, continue practicing hand washing and keep yourself healthy during this uh, very trying time for our country here in the United States. Uh, from what I am seeing right now on news reports is that the United States has now become uh, the leading nation in terms of cases relating to the coronavirus. And so um, every single state in America has been affected. And what I just want to do is uh, look at some uh, statistics uh, right now for you from the uh, Fox News website as to where this is right now. So from what we are seeing uh, from Fox News in terms of this uh, global pandemic, uh, right now around the world, there are 566,269 cases of people infected with the coronavirus. Uh, right now, there is a uh, total deaths all across the world of 25,423 people that have died from the coronavirus. So globally, uh, over 566,000 have been infected. 566,269 infected. And the global death count is 25,423. Now, the cases here in the United States, the confirmed total cases across the United States is 92,932. The total deaths across the United States is 1,380. So that is the uh, count across the United States as it stands uh, right now. And of course, you can look at these statistics by going to the Fox News uh, website, and uh, they have the coronavirus pandemic uh, statistics right there uh, for you to um, see. And, you know, I again, I'm hearing, you know, it doesn't sound good right now, but I'm hearing a lot of encouraging news uh, down the road that, uh, you know, this thing could probably die off uh, probably by the end of April, early May. That's, that's what we're hearing right now from these medical experts. Again, as long as uh, everybody cooperates, as long as everybody here in the United States uh, practices uh, good hygiene as long as you practice your hand washing and please put into practice a safe distance of six feet from people you know uh, right now we cannot go over to see our family in Massachusetts border in Massachusetts as much as we want to and we've been uh, contacting them through FaceTime and social media and all that good stuff, but uh, right now we need to practice safe distancing. You know, as I said yesterday, you know, we as fundamental Baptists are called separatists, right? Well, right now everybody is practicing separatism. Everybody needs to practice being a separatist. You need to practice keeping a safe distance from people, and that is at least six feet away. When I go into grocery stores, as I did yesterday, when I walk into stores, grocery stores, I always keep a safe distance of six feet away from people. I hate to do that because I'm a people person. But 
in, in these trying times, you got to practice safety. You got to use common sense here. So I practice staying away from people from six feet. When you get to the register, they have red tape on the floor there uh, to show you where you need to stop while the person is six feet in front of you at the register. Some people are not practicing that. And I've had to tell a few people already while I was at the register. They came like walking right up to me. You know, putting their, their stuff down on the uh, you know, on the uh, table there. And I and I would say, ma'am, sir, respectively, you need to you need to stay back. You need to keep a safe distance of six feet away. That's why that, that red line's there. Oh, I'm so sorry and and you know, people just don't they're not cognizant of these things. And so, you know, all of you, like Sue Nastasi, you know me. You know, many of you who know me personally, I, 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 I'm a people person. And, you know, but during this time, you're not, you're not trying to be rude. You know, but you need to remind people, you need to keep a safe distance. I was at the post office uh, a couple of days ago, mailing out an order. And uh, right on the door, when you walk into the post office, it's a really small post office. So as you walk in, there's a paper right there that says, please keep a safe distance of six feet from each other. I walked in, there was already a lady there. She had a, she was mailing all kinds of packages. She's there. I'm standing inside, which is her and I in the little small post office. All of a sudden, this guy comes in, a young guy. Walks and was ready to open the door and walk in. I turned him out immediately, looked at him and said, Sir, you need to wait out there uh, and, and stay at least six feet away from me. And he was, you know, wasn't I wasn't rude about it. He wasn't upset about it. He understood. And uh, so he stood back there while I was in the post office, six feet away from the other lady. Then she walked out, and then I went in, and then he came in. And so it's just it's just smart. It, it, it's, it's good common sense to practice this to to try to I guess what they say flatten the curve to, to try to you know cut this thing off at the knees so that life can get back to order so that we can resume our normal lives and so I just encourage all of you out there that this is going to come to pass this ain't going to last forever folks and again you know I, I'm I'm watching a lot of these news briefings and the president's uh, uh, news conferences and I'm glad he's showing his face to the American public every single day. He's taking charge of this thing. And of course, uh, Vice President Mike Pence, you know, is leading the charge of the Corona Task Force here. And uh, just practice what your local, state, and federal government officials are telling us to do. And if we can all band together and cooperate, this thing can be over. And what I'm hearing from the medical professionals out there, that this thing could begin to die off by maybe the end of April, early May. That's, that's what I'm hearing from those guys. And I know that they're, they're pumping out these, these vaccines. You know, and some of the people that I... Now, I, listen... I don't watch Dr. Oz, okay, but I was channel surfing, and I happened to come across his show, and he was interviewing coronavirus patients in the hospital, and uh, they gave them this drug called hydroxychloroquine, I think that's how you pronounce it, hydroxychloroquine, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, and the patients who took this drug, not really, you know, evaluated by the FDA, the Federal Drug Administration, uh, they said that one guy was um, wishing his family, you know, telling his family goodbye. His wife, his kids, uh, he was pretty much, you know, telling them goodbye. Now I'm listening to this guy in his hospital bed. And uh, they came in, with this hydroxychloroquine drug, they gave it to him, not knowing what the results were going to be. He said the following day, his symptoms were gone. The coughing spells were gone. Uh, the heavy, you know, the, the trouble breathing, 
was gone. He said this was the first time he felt normal since he was diagnosed with COVID-19. They interviewed another lady in her hospital bed. They gave her the same drug. And she said she felt better the following day. The, 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 the um, difficulty breathing was gone. The coffin was gone. The fever was gone. So there could be something to this drug that they just want to push out there right now. It might work for some. It might not work for some. We don't know. But there seems to be a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel there. But I know that all of us need to be in prayer, to seek the throne of God, to seek His face, not take advantage of the situation for financial gain as some of those guys on TV are doing, or, or even some of these tele-evangelists are doing. They're the worst of the worst. I'm going to talk about a few of them today, actually. Uh, not to take advantage of this situation for financial gain, to take advantage of somebody, or to make irresponsible, off-the-wall, uh, apocalyptic predictions. And again, this is what I'm going to be talking about today. And so, let's seek the face of the Lord, and let's keep this in prayer, and this will come to pass. This ain't going to last forever, folks, okay? This ain't going to... This ain't going to go all the way into December. This ain't going to last forever. Some of these medical experts that I'm listening to saying that this thing cannot survive in sweltering heat. This virus can't, can't live in sweltering heat. And the warmer weather is coming. Where it's spring is here. And so this ain't going to last forever. So what I'm hearing right now is probably by mid-April, end of April, maybe early May, we can see this thing dying off. So, just cooperate, folks. Wash your hands. Keep a safe distance from people. And uh, stay in your house as much as possible unless you need to go out for essential things. Well, it's so great to see all of you here uh, this afternoon. Like, uh, we got uh, Cindy, Shanice uh, Parker, Tanya is with us here. And uh, Thomas Heminger, Sue Nastasi, great to see Stu, Margaret Mulkey, that's Tim Mulkey's uh, wife, great to see, we just preached at Tim's church not too long ago, before this whole thing broke out, um, Sheila, uh, Sheila Benson, Matthew Cruz, Jacob, man, Yaakov in Hebrew, Jacob, great to see him, Christine, David Mershwal, great to see her as well. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that you took time out of your busy schedule to join us for this Bible prophecy update. We come to you Wednesday through Friday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You know, when I first started doing these live streamings, we were doing it Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. It just got to be a little bit too much with my schedule and speaking and all that, so we cut it down to Wednesday through Friday, and we're doing it instead of 11 a.m., 1.30 p.m. in the afternoon, and that seems to be working out a little bit better uh, for us. When you have an opportunity, I want you to participate in our prophecy poll question. Hey, Tom Landy, good to see you, brother. It's been a while. Hope all is well with you. And so I, I want you to participate in our prophecy poll question. And what I want to do is I want to read that question for you uh, right now, and then when you have an opportunity, go to my website, todayinbibleprophecy.org. And then I want you to scroll down to the very bottom of the page, and you'll see the poll question right there. And this is what the poll question reads. Many are trying to connect the coronavirus to the fulfillment of prophecy in Revelation. Do you believe this is or is not the case? And the multiple choice answers that you can click on is this is, is not. It could be. Not sure. 
So you can go to my website or go to my Facebook timeline and you could uh, click on your answer right there. Do not answer in the comment box. Answer by clicking on the prophecy poll question and then choose the multiple answers. And you can only vote once because, you know, it registers your your computer IP address, so you can't vote multiple times, okay? Vote only once. So you can, when you have an opportunity, go ahead and answer that prophecy poll question. And so Tanya says her daughter uh, is doing school and she is watching me. Well, that's, that's great. She's doing her schoolwork at home while she's watching at home. So that, that's pretty neat. Uh, Sue says, I usually have to watch later, but got on early today. So glad to get here live. I'm glad that you're here too. Sue, hope you and Peter are doing well. Keep yourselves uh, safe out there. You know, many of you have go I've gotten a friend request from me. They have come from me, okay? Uh, I haven't been hacked or nothing like that. And what I did is I restructured my friends list. I mean, uh, we had about 5,000. A lot of them I don't know. A lot of them I don't communicate with. And so we got rid of half of our friends list, okay? And, and reissued friend requests to all of you that I do know uh, personally. And so if you got a friend request from me, yes, it did come from me. And that's the reason why I send you a message, a personal message saying that it came from me so you don't think that I, I got hacked or anything like that. So like I said, go to my website, todayinbibleprophecy.org. While you're there, go to my contact form where it says Contact Evangelist August Rosado and sign up for our newsletters, request for our newsletters. One's going to go out today. And it goes through, uh, through your email through MailChimp. Just give me your name and type in your email address. You'll start receiving our newsletters. And, you know, I depend on speaking engagements to uh, survive. That's how we uh, make our living. It's through speaking engagements. And, you know, we have well, maybe six churches that support us. Some $100 a month, you know, or whatever. You know, some support us quarterly, monthly, you know, or things of that sort. We don't have a whole lot of churches supporting us, but about six uh, churches. But I mostly depend upon love offerings from churches where I speak at across the United States. Well, as it is right now, any future speaking engagements down the road uh, might not happen as long as this virus continues um, to go on. But if our ministry has been a blessing to you and you would like to help support Today in Bible Prophecy Ministries, you can do that. I just put the link in the comment box right there, and you can give whatever you feel the Lord is laying on your heart. You know, my wife and I, since 2008, we have been living by faith. You know, when I go and speak at churches around the country, I never ask for a, an honorarium. You know, I don't say, I want this much up front, and then I want this, and I want, I don't do that. I'll never do that with a church. You know, when I go to a church, you know, I depend on the love offering they give me, whether it's for that one Sunday or a multi-day prophecy conference. But I never say I want this up front. I had one pastor tell me one time. He said, yeah, I goes, you know, brother was out. I wanted this one very well-known prophecy teacher to come to my, my church. And my stars, he said he wanted this up front. He wanted that up front. He wanted, he wanted first class round trip airfare. He wanted a certain type of hotel, and da 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 da. He didn't want to be, a, you know, bothered with anybody, and you know, except when he's there at the church preaching, and you know. And I'm like, my stars, are you kidding me? And he says, well, brother is out of what do you, what do you ask for up front? I'm like, I don't ask for nothing up front. I just depend on whatever love offering you give me. You know, this isn't business, and it's a, it's unfortunate that people make their ministries a business, and they want all this stuff up front in order for them to come to your church. We don't do that. You know, we go to your church as the Lord opens the doors and, you know, depend upon what that love offering is that the church uh, gives us. So that's that's pretty much what we do. But my wife and I, we have been living on faith, by faith, since 2008. God has never let us down. Uh, you know, I don't have a secular job. I don't punch a, a time card. We live by faith. I don't have a weekly paycheck that comes in every week. 
But the Lord always takes care of us. Our bills are always paid. There's always food on the table. There's a roof over our head. There's a car that we're driving. The Lord has never, ever let us down. And He's not going to let us down now. I know that during trying times like these, it, it can. It, I know it can be really difficult to get discouraged and even lose faith. And I admit to everyone out there, I've been really discouraged. And, but, but you know, uh, I know it, it's a human thing, I understand that. But I do know Psalm 91 is true today, as it was 3,000 years ago when it was written by King David. And so, there's no need for us to fret. God's in control. He's in control of your health, your finances, your home, your marriage, and those of you that are in ministry. God's in control. Of all of that. Has it ever occurred to you that nothing has occurred to God? And so I just want to encourage all of you and encourage someone else that you think might be struggling with this right now. Just send them a word of encouragement. Uh, we have uh, Stacy Kaufman Williams uh, with us. And so again, thank you so much for tuning in. On today's broadcast, I want to talk about are the four horsemen of the apocalypse riding now? And I got to tell you, folks, I the things that I am reading on Facebook, what I am seeing on YouTube, and even on the secular media outlets that are reporting on these things, what is being said in the Christian world today? by those who are in ministry leadership. And i got to tell you, folks, it makes the hair of my arms stand up. You know, the cults are not out there doing what Christians are doing in the church today. And to be honest, you know, <laughs> they need to be ashamed of themselves for making such outlandish, Foolish, irresponsible, unbiblical statements concerning COVID-19, concerning this coronavirus pandemic. And we as believers, we must have a biblical world view. Avoid the nonsense, avoid the hype, avoid the fluff. Avoid the wild conspiracies. We must have a biblical world view. We must look at the current situation, whether it's the geopolitical activities or this pandemic, we must look at it from a biblical world view. And this is the reason why. The doctrine of eschatology, or last things, Bible prophecy, has taken a serious hit in terms of reputation. Because of the things that are being posted on social media today by those within the church. And we'll just look at a few of those statements made by ministry leaders today. So, what I want you to do right now, for all of you that are watching, is I want you to have your Bibles out. And I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Revelation, chapter 6. And we're going to be looking at verses 15 through 16. Uh, actually, 15 through 17, rather. Of the book of Revelation. This records the seal judgment. Opened by who? The Lamb. Who's the Lamb? Yeshua. Jesus, he opens the seals. Not man, not Satan, not the Antichrist, not the false prophet. Jesus, the Lamb, opens these seals. And when these seals are open, there is an unprecedented number of people all over the world that will lose their lives. 
And this is going to be in the millions. I'm talking the millions. All over the world. I'm also going to share a recent st statistics of the amount of people infected by this coronavirus and the global death count from this pandemic. And let's see if it matches up with the number that we find in the book of Revelation. Because you've got Christians out there right now and prophecy teachers that are saying the four horsemen of the apocalypse are riding right now. What they are saying is that the book of Revelation is right now in the present being fulfilled. Let's see if that's the case. So let's open our Bibles to the book of Revelation, chapter number 6. And I want you to notice with me in verse number 15. We'll read from verses 15 through 17. And the word of God says this. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? You want to know what gets me? You got those off-the-wall prophecy teachers that are looking at that passage and saying that's being fulfilled right now. With people being shut in their houses to protect themselves from the coronavirus. That has to be one of the worst interpolations interpolations that I have ever heard. What is an interpolation? An interpolation is someone who's putting their own thoughts and their own ideas into the biblical text and saying, this is what I think it's saying. That's interpolating. They're not interpreting, they're interpolating. Another word for that would be eisegete. Eisegete or eisegesis simply means somebody misrepresenting the original thought of the text. Once again, putting their own thoughts and their own ideas into the text and saying, this is what I think it's saying. That's not what we're reading here in Revelation 6, 15 through 17. Because what it's saying is, is all the people of the earth are fighting every nook and cranny to hide in as these seal judgments are being opened by the Lord Jesus himself and it will result in millions and millions all over the globe I mean millions losing their lives that's not happening right now and I'm going to prove that to you like a lawyer in a court of law I'm going to prove that to you today that the four horsemen of the apocalypse are not, and I repeat, are not riding now. So, once again, we have off-the-wall prophecy teachers confusing the masses. There have been many in the past and present off-the-wall irresponsible prophecy teachers that take a current domestic or global situation and they run with it and say, this is the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. This is the fulfillment of the book of Daniel. This is the fulfillment of the book of Revelation. And they try to, they try to tie current geopolitical activities or, or some type of pandemic to the apocalyptic events in the book of Revelation and say, there it is. This is the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. These guys are all over YouTube. They're all over social media. They're, they're horrific. I'm just going to say that. They're horrific. 
I want to just, you know, just list a, a few examples of Christians who get their eschatology from YouTube or some other social media source for their doctrine and say, well, this guy on YouTube said it, so it must be true. Or this guy on Christian TV must have said it, so it's got to be true. Listen, I'm on YouTube, but if you're going to watch somebody on YouTube or on Christian TV, make sure that they are biblically stable. Make sure that they are biblically sound. And if they're not, you need to get rid of them. Stop watching them. Now, one lady on Facebook posted a video from YouTube that said, next week, next week, everybody all over the world is going to get chipped. They're going to get chipped due to the coronavirus outbreak in order to track people all over the globe. That's what she said. Where did she get her information from? YouTube. A guy by the name of Tom Horn. This guy appeared on the Jim Baker show. Jim Baker is a false teacher. I'm going to say that straight up, okay? The guy is a false teacher. The guy is a con. He's a former con, spent like eight years in a federal prison for duping his followers out of millions of dollars. The guy was holding orgies every single night on his Praise the Lord compound. And then the following day would be on Christ, Christian TV, praising the Lord. Spent eight years in a federal prison of a 45-year prison sentence. Jim Baker also is a post-tribber. He teaches a post-tribulation uh, rapture in which he believes the church will go through the entire seven-year period of tribulation. But Tom Horn appeared on his show. And Tom Horn made the statement on Jim Baker's show in which he said, the coronavirus vaccine that is being produced right now will be the mark of the beast. He says, this vaccine will come, are you ready for this? Will come from the blood vein of the Antichrist himself. <laughs> really? And Jim Baker is in agreement and not in, in, in agreement with this guy. Another lady on Facebook said, people will be taking the mark of the beast as of next week, so everybody be prepared. Joseph Prince, another false teacher and hyper-charismatic, said that years ago, God prophesied to him about the coronavirus. Really? Then why, did you, why didn't you talk about it years ago? You never talked about it years ago, but now all of a sudden you're bringing it up? He's another false teacher. A guy by the name of Rick Wiles, he is an anti-Semitic pastor who said the coronavirus is God's death angel. Of course, with Passover coming, how appropriate it is to use that type of uh, terminology. The coronavirus is God's death angel to purge the world from sin. No, sin is purged, Rick Wiles, through the blood of the Lord Jesus, not through a virus. Perry Stone, another hyper-charismatic, says he predicted the coronavirus and claims that this pandemic is an outbreak of God's retribu retribution upon the world. Again, Perry Stone, if you predicted this, why didn't you talk about the coronavirus years ago? I used to watch Perry Stone when he was once biblically sound. I never remembered him talking about coronaviruses, but now all of a sudden, he predicted it? Okay. Another man by the name of Sean Bolt, a pastor, said this, and I quote, The Lord showed me the end of the coronavirus. Listen, folks, for all of you watching. Before there was fake news, 
there have been fake prophecies. And these fake prophecies are coming from those within the church. Bible prophecy has become the most abused doctrine in the church today. It has become a major turnoff today and the world mocks Bible prophecy because Christians abuse it on a daily basis. They abuse it on social media and the world laughs at us. And then we wonder why the, church, uh, the world does not take the church seriously anymore. Why? Because of past failed prophecy prediction. That goes along the line of Deuteronomy 18, 19 through 22. If anybody predicts a prophecy and that prophecy doesn't come to pass, they are all false prophets. And the Bible says, don't take heed to them, avoid them, don't bother listening to them. Where? Uh, let me throw this at you, folks. Where are all these so-called faith healers today? Where are the Benny Hens and all these other so-called faith healers today with this disease pandemic going on all over the world? Where are these faith healers today? Why aren't they clearing out the hospitals and healing the sick right now like they do on stage during their little hyper-charismatic meetings. Why aren't they doing that right now? The reason why you don't see faith healers clearing out the hospitals is the same reason why you don't see psychics winning the lottery. Okay? It's all show on TV until reality hits. And reality is hitting right now. Where are these so-called faith healers? Again, folks, let me reiterate. We must have a biblical worldview. We must be biblicist. We must have a biblical worldview and avoid not only the fake news, but avoid the fake prophecies out there. Uh, you know, whether they come from the, the secular world or the Christian world. We must avoid the wild secular and prophecy conspiracies that are floating out there today. Again, the church has become a laughing stock to the world because of the silly doctrines out there by those who claim to be prophets. And you know, they always try to cash in on this. I Listen, they're not prophets, but they are prophets. Okay? They're not prophets, but they are prophets. And all these silly doctrines are coming from those who claim to be prophets or apostles. And let me tell you something, they're neither. What they are, though, they are false teachers. There are no modern day prophets today. A prophet in the Old Testament was someone who audibly heard the voice of God like you heard my voice. And when that prophet predicted something, that prophecy came to pass 150%. We don't have modern day prophets today. An apostle. According to Acts chapter 1, an apostle was someone who was an eyewitness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus 2,000 years ago. Don't tell me we have modern day apostles today. We don't. I think Jesus himself clears this up. In Revelation chapter 2 and verse number 2 where he says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. I don't care who it is. Anybody today who claims to be a modern day apostle is a liar. Not according to me, according to Jesus. They're liars. Anybody today claiming to be a prophet, they are a liar. And you can tell them that came from August Rosado. No, better yet, 
You can tell them that came from Jesus Christ himself in Revelation chapter 2 and verse number 2. Now, the Jerusalem Post reported, and I quote, Why do some Christians believe coronavirus is an apocalyptic prophecy? And the subtitle of the report read, According to some on social media, the coronavirus is part of the biblical prophecy of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. End quote. Now listen, that news article did not come from some Christian media outlet or some Christian news outlet, that came from the secular Jerusalem Post. A secular Jewish media outlet in Jerusalem. They reported on this. And as I read this, I'm reading between the lines, uh, between the lines, those in the Jerusalem Post laughing their heads off at Christians. Laughing their heads off at the church. As I said already, even the, the false cults out there are not even teaching what Christians are teaching on social media today. I mean, wow, that's telling you something. The Jerusalem Post interviewed a man by the name of Jeff Keenly. He is a, uh, a theology teacher uh, at Dallas Theological Seminary. And this is what he told the Jerusalem Post. And I quote, in the book of Revelation, it specifies there will be famine, earthquake, and plagues, which will strike several, point, several points across the world. Clear signs for the gates of heaven opening. Has that happened? No. As such, you can breathe easy. This isn't Armageddon. So I would agree with Jeff Keenly. Listen, Matthew 24 is the most misinterpreted passage in the church today. We call it the Olivet Discourse. Why? Because Jesus is addressing his Jewish disciples, his Talmudim in Hebrew, disciples, on what mountain in Jerusalem? The Mount of Olives, east of the Temple Mount, in the old city of Jerusalem. Now, who was Jesus' target audience? Wasn't Christians. Wasn't the church. Because there was no Christians, there was no church in the time of Jesus. His target audience was the Jewish people. Not the church, not Christians. But the Jews concerning what? The 70th week of Daniel's prophecy. End time event. How do I know that? Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7. The future tribulation period is a time of Jacob's trouble. Who's Jacob? Genesis 32, 28. Israel. Jacob the deceiver was changed his name from Jacob to Israel. Uh, God will fight for you. So it's all about Israel. Daniel 9, 24. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and thy holy people. Thy people, who's he talking about? The Jews. How do I know that? Because he says, and thy holy city. What holy city is he talking about? Ain't nowhere in America or any other nation in the world but the holy city of Jerusalem in Israel. This has everything to do with Israel. Unbelief in Israel for that matter. And the unbelieving Gentile nations of the world, but the epicenter is unbelieving Israel. Matthew 24 deals with the 70th week of prophecy. There is no church. Try to find the word church in Matthew 24. Try to find Christians in Matthew 24. You can't. Because the church wasn't established as of yet. Matthew 24 verses 1 through 8 is parallel with Revelation 6, 1 through 6. It refers to the same event. They are parallel with each other. The coronavirus is not the four horsemen of Revelation chapter number 6. For example, the rider on the white horse in Revelation 6 
in verse number 2 has not come yet. Now, Revelation 6-2 is parallel with what Jesus said in Matthew 24 verses 5, 11, 24 concerning false messiahs. Concerning false prophets. In Revelation uh, 6 2, uh, well, I'll read verses 1 and 2. And I saw when the Lamb, Jesus, opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw and behold a white horse. Don't confuse that white horse with the white horse of Revelation 19 11. The white horse of Revelation 19 11, that's the true Messiah. That's Jesus coming back at the end of the tribulation period, back to this earth. The rider on this white horse in Revelation 6-2 is the Antichrist. Let me read on. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. The rider on the white horse is the Antichrist. He has a bow, but no arrows, meaning he comes peaceably to establish peace. That's Daniel 9.27. He confirms a seven-year peace treaty with Israel for one week. That one week is seven years. I know it's seven years. Based on another parallel passage, we find in Genesis 29.27, where Jacob had to work in order to get Rachel, which he thought he got Rachel at first. He didn't. He got Leah. But he had to work again for Rachel. And his uncle, Laban, said, if you want Rachel, fulfill her week in which you must work yet seven more years. So we know the week in Daniel 9.27 is the same week in Genesis 29.27, referring to a final seven-year period to come upon unbelieving Israel and the unbelieving Gentile nations of the world. The rider on the white horse has not yet come. Again, Revelation 6.2 is parallel with what Jesus said in Matthew 24, 5 11 and 24 concerning false messiahs but the anti-messiah to come that would be the antichrist he would be the ruler of the revived roman empire out of daniel chapter 2 daniel chapter 7 revelation chapter 12 revelation chapter 13 and revelation chapter 17 the future revived roman empire no such person can come on the world stage until the church is taken out of here. The church must be taken out of the world and the restrainer must be removed in order for this beast to come on the scene. How do I know that? In 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2, verses 6 and 8. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and um, verses 6 through 8 2 <laughs> Thessalonians chapter 2 wow my stars I can find it here 2 Thessalonians you think you get it then you get on to something else here but here it is 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 now listen very carefully or please read along with me in your Bible notice 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 6 and now ye know, that's present now, when Paul wrote in his day, the same is the case today. And now ye know what withholdeth, that he, the Antichrist, might be revealed in his time. Who's holding back the Antichrist from coming on the world stage right now? Verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. It's already here. The mystery of iniquity is present right now. Only he, that's a personal pronoun there. Only he, who now letteth or allows it, will let until he be taken out of the way. Who's he? It's got to be a reference to the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God who is holding back the full force of evil, unprecedented, coming upon this world. When the Holy Spirit is taken out of the way, then verse 8 says this, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy 
with the brightness of his coming. That happens at the end of the tribulation period, at Jesus' second coming. That will be fulfilled in Revelation 19, 19 and 20, when the Antichrist and the false prophet are thrown into the lake of fire. Always compare scripture with scripture, ladies and gentlemen. We call that inductive Bible study. It's a beautiful, rich approach to your personal Bible study. Compare scripture with scripture in order to ascertain more information. And when you apply that hermeneutic, you will get the right doctrine. I continue to uh, read on. Verse 9, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lion wonders. When the church is taken out of here at the rapture, <coughs> excuse me, 2 Thessalonians 2, 1, the restrainer, the Holy Spirit, is not taken out of the world, but the Bible says he's taken out of the way. Not out of the world, but out of the way. Words mean things now. He's taken out of the way. And when the Holy Spirit's taken out of the way, that will allow the Antichrist to come on the world stage out of the revived Roman Empire, which we believe is being fulfilled in the European Union today. The embryo, the infrastructure for that revived Roman Empire. Folks, listen, that hasn't happened yet. Now, when that second horseman rides, he is the red horse. That represents war. Well, that represents global war. In Revelation 6, in verse 4, it says, And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given unto him, that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. That represents global war, resulting in the death, you ready? Of millions all over the world, worldwide. Is that going on right now? No, it's not. Obviously, you can look out there. It's not. Now, the red horse is parallel to Jesus' words. In Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 6, in which uh, Jesus said in Matthew 24 and verse number 6, he said this, And ye shall hear of wars, and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So the rider on this red horse represents global war, parallel to Jesus' words in Matthew 24, verse 6. Now, millions are going to die, millions around the world, when that red horse starts riding. Now, look at the number of people worldwide right now who have died from the coronavirus. To date, and I got this from the Fox website just a few moments ago, the worldwide death count from those who died from the coronavirus right now stands at 25,000 251. 25,251. Now listen, that number is far from the number that we see in Revelation. Now, I'm going to get to that number in just a few minutes. Now, the rider on the black horse, he represents famine. In Revelation 24, uh, excuse me, Revelation 6, and verse number 5, it says this. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld a lower black horse, and him, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hands. The balances represent commerce. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil or the wine. The black horse represents a global famine, a global food shortage. People all over the world are starving to death. As I said, the balances represent commerce, trade, business. A penny 
in biblical times represents a denarius. A denarius would represent one day's wage. Maybe enough to buy a loaf of bread. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, that is not going on right now. There is not a global food shortage going on right now. The black horse is parallel to Jesus' words in Matthew chapter 24 and verse number 7 in which Jesus said, For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines, pestilences, diseases, and earthquakes in diverse places. We've always had pestilences throughout the centuries. We've always had earthquakes throughout the pestilences throughout the uh, centuries. But in the tribulation period, these pestilences and earthquakes will be unprecedented like never before in the history of mankind. That is not happening right now. Listen, despite people hoarding the grocery stores. You know, they're going into these grocery stores and they're really not hoarding the food. <laughs> they're hoarding toilet paper. They're hoarding the hand sanitizers. Not really much the food. There is no global starvation going on right now with this coronavirus that has resulted in millions of people dying. Now, here's what I wanted to get to. The rider on the pale horse. Let's read about him. In Revelation 6, 8. And I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them. Death and hell. Authority was given unto them. Over the fourth part of the earth to do what? To kill. With sword, that's war. With hunger, that's famine. And with death, that's global. And with the beast of the earth could refer to diseases coming from animals and even animal attacks. For that matter. Now, the pale horse, well, that corresponds to again what Jesus said in Matthew 24, 6 and 7. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in divers places. Now, with the rider on the pale horse, he takes one-fourth of the world's population. One-fourth of the world's population is dead when that pale horse rides. We have seven billion people on planet Earth today. Take one-fourth of seven billion people and you have a global death count of 1.5 billion with a B as in Bob. 1.5 billion people. Folks, that number is amplified. I mean, that goes beyond the number that we are right now reading with this coronavirus death count. The coronavirus has killed over 25,000 people globally, worldwide. That is a far cry from the number that we see here in the book of Revelation, chapter 6, and verse number 8. Go to the trumpet judgments. After the sealed judgments are done, one-fourth of humanity is dead. Go to the trumpet judgments. <clears throat> in Revelation, chapter 9, verses 15 and 18, another one-third of humanity dies. Another 1.5 billion people dead. We are talking between the seal and the trumpet judgments. Three and a half billion people are dead. Between the seal 
and the trumpet judgments combined, they, now listen closely to me, they will reduce the world's population to one half its pre-tribulation level. That's not going on right now. Folks, that is not the case right now. How can Christians be so irresponsible? And prophecy teaches for that matter. And say that the four horsemen of the apocalypse are riding right now. That is false doctrine. And such people who are teaching this need to be avoided and rejected, whether they're on Christian TV or on YouTube, for that matter. Folks, listen. Avoid the wild conspiracies. Stay away from those people like that guy. I, I can't remember his name right now. Uh, he, he has these wild conspiracy theories. And YouTube even had to ban the guy. That's how crazy. I can't remember his name right now. You might know what I'm talking about. YouTube had to ban the guy. That's how bad he is. Avoid the wild conspiracies. And just stay with the plain sense interpretation of scripture. You, and if you do that, you can't go wrong. If you compare scripture with scripture, because the Bible is its best known interpreter, if you apply inductive Bible study, you can't go wrong. You must apply a proper biblical hermeneutic. Who's speaking? Who is he speaking to? What is he speaking about? Don't eisegete. Don't put your own thoughts and ideas into the text. Exegete. That's what you need to be doing. I need to be doing. Exegete. You draw the intended meaning from the scripture as the author originally intended. That's what you do. You exegete. You exegete. We must have a biblical world view. Again, if you're going to watch Christian TV, if you're going to watch somebody on YouTube, please make sure that they are biblically stable. What we are seeing right now is stage setting. They are early indicators that the last days of the church age are coming to a rapid close. And the rapture of the church is nigh at hand. Let's avoid the fluff. Let's avoid the hype. Let's avoid the sensationalism and read the Bible for its plain sense interpretation. If the plain sense makes sense, don't look for any other sense or you will end up with nonsense. You see that same nonsense on Facebook, social media, YouTube, Christian TV. Avoid that all. If they're not biblically stable, avoid them. I know hype and sensationalism sells. And that's what people in the church are looking for. Uh, we've heard about the rapture already. We've heard about this. We've heard about the tribulation, the anti We've heard about all that already. We want something new. That's dangerous. That's very dangerous. Let's win the lost at every cost. And let's restore credibility to the wonderful doctrine of what we call eschatology or Bible prophecy. I want to thank Luann Parish, their church out there in Portage, Indiana, supports us. We appreciate them. Pastor Lonnie Lost and all of them, just real good people. Yeah, Luann, that's what you do. You compare scripture with scripture. That's the only way. To study. I'm glad you're here, Luann. Beverly Del Bonis Ricci is here. Stephen Mitch Smith. Christine Yarbo Fleming. Jimmy Galgano. Wilda Teeter. Uh, Sue Nastasi. No, Sue, I wish I was kidding you. I'm not. There are people that are teaching this nonsense out there today. Grace Colleen Malinsky. Chuck Snow. Donna Wilson Leach. Samuel Langston. Irene. Stacy Coffin Williams, uh, again, uh, Frank Pichillo, uh, uh, Pichillo, I hope I got that right, <clears throat> has just joined us. But Frank, our broadcast has come to an end. 
But we're going to upload this in a few minutes so that you can watch this in its entirety. Again, folks, let's have a biblical worldview here. Avoid the, 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 the drama and the sensationalism that this coronavirus is the fulfillment of the four husband of the apocalypse that are riding the earth right now. Hogwash. That's false doctrine. And so let's just stick with the scriptures for their plain sense interpretation. So as I uh, bring this uh, broadcast to the close, Luann says, glad to have join you live this time. Hug your wife for me. Thank you, Luann. And please tell everyone over there in uh, Indiana we said hello in Portage. Lonnie and all of them, just tell them, tell them that we said hello. Colleen, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And uh, again, let's restore credibility to Bible prophecy once again. Christians have destroyed it. I'm sorry, they have. Prophecy teachers have just gone off the, off the deep end with this. And so, let's use Bible prophecy to win people to the Lord. Cindy, you're very, very uh, welcome. And, uh, you know, what did Jesus say about the truth? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And so, let's just stick to the truth of God's Word. Avoid those guys on, on Christian TV and on uh, social media that are just not biblically stable at all. You just need to avoid them. Let me just uh, say that uh, Passover is coming up April the 6th. We're going to have a live Passover Seder presentation right here at my house. We'll have the candles lit. We'll have uh, the Passover tables. We're going to have everything spread out here for Passover. And we're going to be live streaming this Passover Seder. And so uh, I want you to join us through live streaming, of course, for this Passover Seder at my home. Passover, I believe, begins on April the 6th. And so we'd love to have you join us for a special live Pesach, Passover in Hebrew. Passover, Pesach, Seder. Seder is Hebrew for order. Passover, Seder, Passover, order. So, hopefully you can join me live for our Passover Seder presentation right here at my house. Don't forget, visit my website, todayinbibleprophecy.org. Go to my uh, contact form on the website, give me your name, your email address, and uh, request for our prophecy news letters through MailChimp. And when you have a chance, I want you to participate in our prophecy poll question. You can either answer that question on my Facebook timeline or go to my website, todayinbibleprophecy.org, scroll down to the bottom of the page, and I want you to answer the prophecy poll question. And this is what it reads. Many are trying to connect the coronavirus to the fulfillment of prophecy in Revelation do you believe this is or is not the case? And the multiple choice choice answers you have is this is, is not, it could be, not sure. So, you can go to my website, answer the prophecy poll question. Or go to my Facebook timeline and answer right there. Don't answer in the comment box. Answer by clicking on the link, and then you can give us your answer there. And so I hope and pray that um, you can do that. And of course, right now, 71% of you says it is not. I agree with you. 14% say it is. Well, they need to go back to reading their Bible. Uh, uh, another 14% says uh, not sure. Not sure. And so, uh, if you haven't voted, then please go ahead and vote right now. Again, the prophecy poll question. Many are trying to connect the coronavirus to the fulfillment of prophecy and revelation. Do, do you believe this is or is not the case? 14% said this is. Wow. 
71% said is not. I agree with you. 14% said it could be. Well, hopefully after uh, hearing what I had to say about this, well, this could influence your uh, vote. And uh, again, uh, navigate around my website, go to my bookstore, order my books on Bible Prophecy, uh, Holy Land products. And we did reschedule our Bible Prophecy Tour to Israel for June 20th through the 30th. Hopefully, this coronavirus is completely gone. Life is restored back to normal. People are back to work. Church doors are back open. And uh, Israel will have their borders open and open for business. If you want to come to Israel with me, June 20th through the 30th, make those preparations right now. If you want to go, get a hold of me. I'll tell you exactly what you need to do. We will be in Israel and we'll go east of the Jordan River over into Jordan. We will go to North Jordan to visit Mount Nebo where Moses viewed the promised land before he died. And then we'll drive south to Petra where the Jews will be held up for the last half of the tribulation period. So Israel and Jordan. The tour price is $3,490 per person. That includes Israel and Jordan. That includes your round trip airfare, hotels, buffet breakfast and dinner daily, all buffet, and your transportation. Everything is included in that tour price. So if you want more information, contact me through Facebook Messenger or send me an email, prophecy at gmail.com. And I'll tell you exactly what you need to do. We are going to upload this uh, video to my Facebook timeline as well as to YouTube. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube page. And we have over over 450 videos on, about maybe 480 or so videos on YouTube of these Facebook live streaming videos. My Bible prophecy teaching from Israel, Petra, Rome, and uh, all of my church speaking. All of those videos are on YouTube. So subscribe to my YouTube page, August Rosado, R-O-S-A-D-O, on YouTube. And if you have a Twitter account, follow me on Twitter, Bible underscore prophecy, or August Rosado, at Bible underscore prophecy. Look at all of my late breaking news stories that I post right there on Twitter. And my Twitter feed also feeds to my website. So you can also view that Twitter feed on my website of all the late-breaking geopolitical activities going on all over the world. And if you've got a LinkedIn account, follow me as Evangelist August Rosado on LinkedIn. So those are the social media networks that you can follow me on. Well, as I do every Friday, I love to pronounce the Hebraic Hebrew blessing upon all of you that are watching. It's called the Aaronic Prayer or the Prayer of Aaron. Aaron, the Kohen Hagadol, the High Priest. And this Hebrew prayer is out of Numbers chapter 6, 24 through 26. I want to pray this prayer in Hebrew and then translate it into English upon you, your family, for your health, your finances, your children, your churches. And some 3,500 years ago, the high priest would split his fingers like this to form the 21st letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the Hebrew letter Shin. Looks like a fancy W, if you will. But it's the 21st letter that has the SH sound, Sh Shin, Shaddai. Or as you would see on the mezuzah, El Shaddai, which is affixed upon the doorpost. We talked about the mezuzah yesterday. And the high priest would split his fingers like this, stretch it out to the uh, people that are watching. And then he would pray the prayer in Hebrew out of number 6, 24 through 26. Ivarechecha Adonai Vishmarecha Ya'er Adonai Pinabilecha Vihunecha 
Isa Adonai Penavi Lecha, V'yasem Lecha, Shalom. The Lord bless thee, the Lord keep thee, the Lord make his face shine upon thee, and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee, and give thee peace. May he give you peace in these trying times, as he is the Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. I hope all of you have a blessed weekend and have a blessed day in the Lord's house via long distance and through live stream, okay? And uh, be healthy, stay safe. Remember, practice social distancing. If you have to go out somewhere where there's going to be crowds, stay away from a person by at least six feet. Wash those hands and stay healthy. And remember, keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon. And Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. That's Hebrew. For pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And Lord willing, I hope to see you Wednesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed weekend. And remember, this too shall come to pass. God bless, guys. And uh, we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.